Hello and welcome in another short Python tutorial and in this one I'm going to show you how you can easily translate anything with Python from one language to more than 100 in only 5 lines of code. And I'm going to start with that, I'm going to show you the code and then I'm going to explain the logic behind it and afterwards I want to give more attention to this library because I believe there's quite some value that can be extracted from it especially the, the interval of confidence that it provides, which means it shows how confident Google Translate is when it comes to providing the translation, how you can detect the language with this, but also how to get the possible mistakes, which include spelling mistakes. So first, I will write the five lines of code that I believe a lot of people came for, and then I'm going to go into the explanation part. So from Google Trans, this is the name of the library, I'm going to import translator, and languages. Then I'm going to create a sample text to translate and it would be this is my house and then I'm going to create a for loop for every language and the languages. I want first to create a variable t which would be um, basically translator dot translate of sample text. So I would like to translate the sample text and the destination language would be the language of the list and then I want to print what I want to print is first the language and then I want to print uh, the translation and this is it these are the five lines that you need to make any translation and then later on you just need to change this part that's it now if this is what you came for there's the five lines of code if you want to know why this works and how this works then let's take a look into that so First, let's make sure that it works. Here is the output. And as you can see, it runs through all the languages that are in the list and it provides the output. Now, what we did here is we created, of course, a for loop. We're using the function translator that we imported to translate our simple text. And DEST stands for destination, which is the destination or the output language that we want to use. Now, why do we use here language? while here we use languages and then language. Now the best way to explain that is first let's print the languages list or maybe before that let's print the length of it. Let's see how many languages we have. So we have 106 languages. I'm going to print the entire list and as you can see it's actually the dictionary. We have AF uh, which stands for Afrikaans. We have BN, which stands for Bengali. We have, uh, I don't know, Corsican, and the key for that is CO. So when we actually use this language with lowercase, what it does is it takes the key. So you can think of it, it starts with AF. So destination would be AF, it gets the translation. Then it's SQ, AM. AR and so on. However, if we want to print that out, it wouldn't be very much useful for us. So if we get GL, for example, and then the translation, yes, for those people who know what the abbreviation is, then that's very useful, but not for me. So I would like to have not GL, but Galician or KA. I would, would not help me a lot. I want to have Georgian. So in order to do that, we need to access the, this dictionary, which is what I do in this part, and I provide the key. And what the key is, well, it runs through the list and it gets the key, so the output is the value. And if you're not familiar with this, then I would suggest you take a look at the beginners uh, series and especially focus on the dictionaries. So this is actually how you would simply translate anything to more than 100 languages or at least 106 at the moment of this recording. Now, um, I think it's very important to cover the interval, the confidence interval. I find that very useful because having a translation is good, but is it accurate? If it's not, then it's probably not that useful. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to create to run through this list. I don't want uh, 100 lines. I just want one simple translation. So what I'm going to do is my destination language would be, let's say, French. And I can just print, of course, the translation, simple as that. But what I also want to do is I want to have t.extra data, so some extra data that we can extract. 
and here I will specify confidence. Also, what I want to get is from the extra data, I want to get uh, possible mistakes. Now, we didn't make any spelling mistake here, but let's make one on purpose and let's see if that would be shown or not. And I'm going to run this. So what we do is we have a sample text which has a mistake on purpose. We're going to translate it to French and we would get the translation, the confidence, how confidence Google Translate is, and then the possible mistakes. So let's see the output. So what we get is we get the translation to French. The confidence is, is one, which means 100%, so it's quite confident. But then in this line, you will notice that we have uh, in bold and italic that this word, according to Google Translate, has not been correctly spelled and it should be house, which is 100% correct. So well done, Google Translate. And yeah, this is actually how you would detect if there are any possible mistakes in the input. And lastly, I would like to cover the language detection. So what we can do in here is we can specify SRC, which stands for the source language. And we can specify, for example, English. And I would specify this only if you're trying to translate a word that is, let's say a word that can be found in multiple languages. But if it's a, a sentence or an article, then Google can pick that up quite well. However, again, if you're translating a, a word, then specify this as well. Now, in order to detect the language, let's try to have the word hello. And we no longer want to translate. What we want to do is, and I'm going to remove this one because we no longer need that. We want to print translator.detect. So this is something else. We, we don't want to translate, we want to detect. To detect the sample text, simple as that. If I run this, the output is the language. So it has been detected, as you can see, that it's English. And confidence is 100% sure that uh, it is confident. But what if we choose, let's say, uh, mouse? What would the output be? Well, it is still English, but as you can see, the confidence is 0.9418. And the reason for that is, although it's highest probability that we're looking, we're actually searching for an English word, it could be that this very same word exists in other languages with a different meaning. So Python, in this case, Google Translate cannot be 100% sure that the word that we provided is actually an English word. That's why it provides a quite high confidence. However, it still leaves a bit of room that it could be wrong. So I think this, this covers pretty much the most important parts of this library. And one more thing that I would like to do is let's try to maybe translate a song into from one language, so let's say from English to a few others and then back to English again. And let's see if the translation is still here or actually if the meaning is still here or it has been lost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use triple quotes because it will be a multi-line and I will take part of Imagine, so the song from Beatles, which has quite nice lyrics and I'm going to translate it. But what I'm going to do is I don't want to translate to 106 languages because it would be way too long, but also it's difficult to follow. So what I'm going to do is I will create a my languages list, which would start with Italian, let's say French, say German, then let's say Spanish and then English. So what I want to do is I want to take this song, translate it first to Italian, then to French, to German, Spanish, and then back to English. So again, I'm going to create a for loop, so for language in my languages. What I want to do is um, I'm going to have the same variable t, which would be translator.translate. I want to translate the song and the destination would be basically, the destination language would be just the language that I have in the list. Then I want to print I can print this song, but I want to have the language first. So I want to have, let's say, language plus, let's say, dash, and then plus langu languages 
So this is actually what we did in the first part when we went through the dictionaries and got the value back. I want to print the song in that language, which means first I, I, I can actually do t dot text, which is a translation, but I want to store this uh, as my variable. So the song would now be this translation. And then I want to just print an empty line. So what I'm going to do is I have a song, it would be translated, the language would be printed out, then the translation of the song, and then just an empty line, and then it would continue to the next one until it gets to back, back to English. So let's see what the output would look like. So that's Italian, French, German, Spanish, amazing. So now I can't judge the translation, but looks very good to me with my lack of knowledge of Italian, French, German, and Spanish. But if you know these languages, you can take a look at the translation and say how good they are. Otherwise, you, you can just agree that they're amazing. Uh, so Italian, French, German, Spanish, and then back to English. And so for example, the English one we can translate and we can actually compare to the original one. And we can see that the first line is actually quite well. Uh, second one is also close enough. Third, I, I would say it's, it did a quite a good job and it, it's, it's, it's fairly acceptable. So feel free to play with it and see if you can find other use cases or maybe, and I know that there are some, some hosts like uh, Jimmy Fallon that what they do is they take a, a song that's in one language, like this one in English, then it, it's being run just like this. Uh, it's being translated to other languages and then back to English. Now, the reason that one of the main reasons why we got such a nice translation back is because we chose languages that are yeah, quite similar maybe to one another, that has, have a lot of in common, they come from maybe the same part of the world. But maybe if you go to the list of languages and you, you translate it to, I don't know, maybe to Korean and then to, to Latvian and then to, um, I don't know, Mongolian and then back to English, then you would get a, maybe a bit more different translation than what we got down here. And that would be all regarding this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below and until next time.